Okay, so good morning, guys. This is uh, physiology. This is Wednesday. What is it? May 6th, right? Okay. So, um, like I was just saying for the people that um, were here a little early, uh, we are done now with the endocrine system module. And move my mic. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, we're done with the endocrine system module. The last part was the little project he had to submit to me. So if you haven't submitted it yet, I know a few of you that are popping in here, I still haven't received it from. Um, but like I said, um, I'm, I'm, the grading period for me is gonna cut off after the discussion board and the quiz. So as long as you did that, you're fine. If you didn't, then you're gonna have to hold the zero until the next grading period because I, I, I've been announcing for a long time that that had to be done. So it's not that you can't do it. Remember, I'm letting you do stuff. I just, you gotta be fair to me. I can't be grading things, you know, like that just because, you know, the grades are due. So please check your grade after this class. Know what you're missing. Message me like you all, all have been doing what you need to do. If you need extra time, I I'm cool with it, guys. Trust me. The last thing I want to do is, is stress you guys out more. So I'm being very flexible with my grades and uh, assignment um, submissions, okay? Um, thank you all of you that did turn in the endocrine system summative uh, video project on time. Um, I know some of you uh, just turned it in to me this morning, which, which is fine, because again, um, that's gonna be the cutoff. Everything before that is, will be graded and that project will not be on this report card. So anyway, um, any questions about the endocrine system project before I move on? Scarlett, I know you came in a little later, uh, Fatima. Do you have any questions about it since you guys came in a little late? Any questions about your project? Scarlett? No. How about Fatima? No. You good? No. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. And I noticed that some of you already started the next module. Fatima, I saw that you already started the nervous system. So this is great. Like I said, I, I want you guys working at your own pace. So just do do it when you when when you have time or you feel ready. Okay. So we're we're on the new module, which is the nervous system. Um, as usual, here are my five folders. If you weren't here on Monday, I introduced the nervous system uh, to you with a um, little video objective where I kind of cover, you know, uh, what it is we're going to learn. And the nervous system, this is a big one. This one actually covers more than one chapter. It's, it's a few chapters, but I'm condensing it all into one. So if you weren't here, I think Scarlett and Fatima, you weren't here, just watch that video on your own, please, okay? Um, here are my notes, but let me go back. Um, I already uploaded some stuff in the assignments. And like I said, some of you already began them, which is great. Um, but as usual, um, the order of these, it's not like strict, okay? You can, you can do whichever you want, right? Just make sure that the summative is always the last part, okay? Um, I haven't uploaded a discussion board yet because I haven't thought of one yet, but it'll be coming. Um, quiz is here, and let's look at the assignments so far, okay? So on Monday, what we did is we watched this video on concussions. And then as a group, we had a little discussion about these questions, which are here. So Fatima and Scarlett, if you want to go ahead and take a look at them. Um, it's not graded, okay? That's why, that's why if you look in Schoology, there is no assignment called concussions. So if I label it Zoom group, just know that that's just meant to be like a, like a discussion. So that's the benefit of coming to class. I know a lot of you guys can't always make it, which is fine. And that's why I'm not giving any points for the Zoom group stuff. However, the Zoom group stuff gives us a chance to talk about what we're learning, gives you a chance to ask me questions about the stuff we're covering. So even if you're not here, please make sure you watch this video. Make sure you look at those questions because if it's on here, it's fair game for the quiz as always. So that's what we did on Monday. Any questions about the Monday stuff? Uh, people that were here like Myrtle and Daisy, Anna, do you have any questions about concussions, the video we watched? No. You all got, you all good? Okay. And again, there's the link for it, and there are discussion questions for Fatima and Scarlett, okay? Um, today, what I want to do is uh, tell you a little bit more about the nervous system. And what we're going to do is we're going to watch uh, this little video. And for the video, there is, again, a Zoom group discussion questions that I want us to do, okay? Um, 
After that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the notes and kind of tell you how all this connects to what we're studying. Like I said, these two chapters, I'm jumping back and forth in them. So the assignments that I already posted for you kind of cover both. So after we do today's Zoom group discussion, we're going to then, you know, on your own, there is a watching assignment, which is your crash course video. And then I have two reading assignments, which is for the same article on the certain central nervous system, there's the ELA, and then there's the science writing prompt. So it's two different prompts. They're, they're pretty easy. Uh, it should only take you a few paragraphs, but again, it directly relates to what we're talking about. So again, I put due dates. So I put Friday, May 8th, Monday, May 11th, but again, they're not strict. If you wanna do this first, before that, whatever, it's totally up to you. If you wanna do this next week, week after, as long as you do these before the summit, if I'm okay with it, is that clear? Yes. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna watch this little video here that I already posted for you. And then um, let's go ahead and look at the discussion questions we'll be doing, okay? So um, I'm going to put you into your Zoom groups. And as usual, make sure that um, one person is sharing the screen. If the sharing screen feature doesn't work, I know I think on cell phones it doesn't work as well. So once you share it, the discussion questions are here. And then we'll come back as a group. And, or should we just watch it as a group, guys? What do you prefer, groups or just as a class to watch the video? As a class. As a class? Okay, okay. So let's watch this together. Let me go full screen then. Make sure your volume is turned up. And here we go. Go full screen. All right, here we go. The great enemy of learning isn't your own lack of talent. Hold on, it's being interrupted by other people. Okay. We've got a few different axon layouts in our body, but in the most abundant. Sorry, from the beginning. This morning was a typical morning for me. I woke up thinking about that dream that I keep having about the guy in the sloth suit, and then I got dressed because I was cold, and then I made some toast with butter because I was hungry, and then I let the dog out because she was whining and staring at me, and then I made some tea, but I let it cool off before I drank it because it burned my mouth yesterday. In addition to being just part of my morning ritual, all of these actions are examples of what my nervous system does for me. The weirdo dream, the sensation of cold air and hot tea, deciding what to put on the toast, going to the door, the sound of the dog, all of that was processed and executed by electrical and chemical signals to and from nerve cells. You can't oversell the importance of the nervous system. It controls all the things. All your organs, all your physiological and psychological reactions, even your body's other major controlling force, the endocrine system, bows down before the nervous system. There is no you without it. There's no me without it. There's no dogs without it. There's no animals there's no, there's no things, there's things. It's important. That's why we're dedicating the next several episodes to the fundamentals of the nervous system. It's anatomy and organization, how it communicates, and what happens when it gets damaged. This is mission control, people. <laughs> Even though pretty much all animals, except super simple ones like sponges, have a nervous system, ours is probably the most distinctive feature of our species. From writing novels to debating time travel to juggling knives, all of your thoughts and actions and emotions can be boiled down into three principal functions. Sensory input, integration, and motor output. Imagine... Let me pause right there because this guy talks very fast, I know. And again, uh, that's why I uploaded the link so that you can watch it on your own. So those three things that he just said are very important, and that's a good place to start a little brief conversation. So like he said, there's really three functions of the nervous system. It's the sensory, the motor, and the integration. And going back to that example we talked about on Monday, guys, where we said if I were to um, you know, stab my, my, my finger on like a, a needle or if I were to burn my hand, uh, the sensory, the motor, and the integration all work together. So the sensory, think of it like, you know, you sense pain, you sense heat, you sense poking on what we call your sensory organs like skin, okay? And then that that sensation or that sense, uh, which is picked up as, you know, by, by your touch sense, um, get, sends the signal up my nerves into my spinal cord, up to my brain, and then the brain 
receives a signal that tells it to react. We call that a motor response on Monday, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the response he talked about. And how your brain takes that information and actually acts upon it, that's what we call integration, okay? So I just wanted to pause there. Um, for people that weren't here, Scarlett and Fatima, we talked about that on Monday, so please rewatch my YouTube video that I posted. But I just wanted to refresh your memories because this guy talks very fast. Okay, here we go. Spider walking onto your bare knee. The sensory receptors on your skin detect those eight little legs. That information is your sensory input. From there, your nervous system processes that input and decides what should be done about it. That's called integration. Like, should I be all zen about it and just let it walk over me? Or should I not be zen and freak out and run around screaming, spider! Your hand lashing out to remove the spider and maybe your accompanying banshee scream is the motor output the response that occurs when your nervous system activates certain parts of your body. As you can imagine, it takes a highly integrated system to detect, process, and act on data like this all. Does that make sense, guys? Because that's the same exact thing we talked about on Monday. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Time. And when we talk about the nervous system, we're really talking about several levels of organization, starting with two main parts, the central and peripheral nervous systems. The central nervous system is your brain and spinal cord, the main control center. It's what decided to remove the spider and gave the order to your hand. Your peripheral nervous system is composed of all the nerves that branch off from the brain and spine that allow your central nervous system to communicate with the rest of your body. And since its job is communication, your peripheral system is set up to work in both directions. The sensory or afferent division is what picks up sensory stimuli, like, hey, there's an arachnid on you and slings that information to the brain. Your motor, or efferent division, is the part that sends directions from your brain to the muscles and glands, like, hey. I'll rewind that because, again, we talked about this on Monday. Yeah, let me play a little bit here. Information to the brain. Your Pause motor. Right there. Okay, so we, we talked about this on Monday, but now we're introducing vocabulary. So we said on Monday, the difference between the central and the peripheral nervous system is that the central, as you can see, includes the brain and the spinal cord, is in the middle part of your body. And what did we say peripheral means again, guys? We talked about this on Monday. Isn't it the one that wasn't connected to the brain or something like that? Exactly. It's everything that's not connected to the brain. So on this little diagram of this person, it would be all of the little nerves that extend throughout your body, right? So in your foot, in your arm, in your belly, everywhere else, okay? And so peripheral kind of means on the side. But like he's saying, within the peripheral nervous system, there are these two different divisions that we call the sensory and the motor. And again, sensory referring to the information that's picked up from the outside world. Okay, so those are called afferent nerves. We'll get into that in my notes. And then motor refers to, you know, kind of like a car which moves. It refers to how that nerve then acts upon what um, stimulated a response, okay? So that's, that's what he's talking about here. Afferent division is the part that sends directions from your brain to the muscles and glands, like, hey, hand part, how about you do something about that spider? The motor division also includes the somatic or voluntary nervous system that rules your skeletal muscle movement, and the autonomic or involuntary nervous system that keeps your heart beating and your lungs breathing and your stomach. Now, we already talked about voluntary and involuntary responses when we were on the um, circulatory and even in the muscular system. So now, like he said at the beginning of the video, this is why the nervous system is so important because it is what's in charge of those involuntary responses. So we're gonna get into the subdivisions of the nervous system. So central, that's, that's the easy one, that's just the brain and the spinal cord, but the peripheral, as you can see, has way more divisions than actually he's showing you here. So we're gonna get into, within the peripheral nervous system, there's actually what we call the somatic, which is the one that you can consciously control. So like me, typing on the keyboard, me walking around, you know, in the classroom or in my own house. That's called the somatic nervous system. That's the conscious control or voluntary. Whereas the autonomic, this is that part of your nervous system, like you said, that controls those other things we've been talking about. Heartbeat, breathing, digestion, right? So that's why I saved this system till the end, okay? And finally, that autonomic system, too, has its own complementary forces. Its sympathetic division mobilizes the body into action and gets it all fired up like, ah, spider! While the parasympathetic division relaxes the body and talks it down, like, 
It wasn't a Black Widow or anything. Fine, breathe. So that's the organization of your nervous system in a nutshell. But no matter what part you're talking about, they're all made up of mainly nervous tissue, which you'll remember is densely packed with cells. Maybe less than 20% of that tissue consists of extracellular space. Everything else, cells. The type of cells you most likely heard of are the neurons, or nerve cells, which respond to stimuli and transmit signals. These cells get all the publicity. They're the ones we're always thanking every time we ace an exam or think up a snappy comeback to an argument. But these wise guys really account for just a small part of your nervous tissue because they are surrounded and protected by gaggles of neuroglia, or glial cells. Once considered just the scaffolding or glue that held neurons together, we now know that our different glial cell types serve many other important functions, and they make up about half of the mass of your brain, outnumbering their neuron colleagues by about 10 to 1. Star-shaped astrocytes are found in your central nervous system and are your most abundant and versatile glial cells. They anchor neurons to their blood supply and govern the exchange of materials between neurons and capillaries. Also in your central nervous system are your protective microglial cells. They're smaller and kind of thorny looking and act as the main source of immune defense against invading microorganisms in the brain and spinal cord. Your ependymal cells line cavities in your brain and spinal cord and create, secrete, and circulate cerebrospinal fluid that fills those cavities and cushions those organs. And finally, your central nervous system's oligodendrocytes wrap around neurons producing an insulating barrier called the myo. Sheath. Now, over in your peripheral nervous system, there are just two kinds of glial cells. Satellite cells do mainly in the peripheral system what astrocyte cells do in the central system. They surround and support neuron cell bodies. While Schwann cells are similar to your oligodendrocytes in that they wrap around axons and make that insulating myelin sheath. So don't sell your glial cells short. They're in the majority. I know that's a lot of vocabulary. Don't worry, I'm going to cover it in my notes a little slower than he is and just give you the highlights. But those are the six different type of glial cells. And then we'll also compare that to neurons. Okay, so again, he's just giving you a really brief summary. And I know he talks very fast. But again, this is covered throughout chapters eight and nine. And I'll show you my notes in a little bit where I'll be talking about that pretty cell-wise, but of course, when it comes to passing tests and winning arguments, most of the heavy lifting is done by the neurons. And they're not all the same. They're actually highly specialized, coming in all shapes and sizes, from tiny ones in your brain to the ones that run the entire length of your leg. But they do all share three super cool things in common. Number one, they're some of the longest-lived cells in your body. There's a lot of debate right now about whether you're actually born with all the neurons you'll ever have, but some research suggests that at least in your brain cerebral cortex, your neurons will live as long as you do. Cool fact number two, they are irreplaceable. It's a good thing that they have such longevity because your neurons aren't like your constantly renewing skin cells. Most neurons are amitotic, so once they take on their given roles in the nervous system, they lose their ability to divide, so take care of them. And number three, they have huge appetites. Like a soccer-playing teenager, neurons have a crazy high metabolic rate. They need a steady and abundant supply of glucose and oxygen, and about 25% of the calories that you take in every day are consumed by your brain's activity. Along with all these wonderful qualities, your neurons also share the same basic structure. The soma, or cell body, is the neuron's life cycle. It's got all the normal cell goodies, like a nucleus, DNA, mitochondria, ribosomes, cytoplasm. The bushy branch-like things projecting out from the soma are dendrites. They're the listeners. They pick up messages, news, gossip from other cells, and convey that information to the cell body. The neuron's axon, meanwhile, is like the talker. This long extension or fiber can be super short or run a full meter from your spine down to your ankle. We've got a few different axon layouts in our body, but in the most abundant type of neuron, the axons transmit electrical impulses away from the cell body to other cells. For us students of biology, it's a good thing that nerve cells aren't all identical because their differences in structure are one of the ways that we tell them apart and classify them. The main feature we look at is how many processes extend out from the cell body. A process, in this case, being a projecting part of an organic structure. 99% of all your neurons are multipolar neurons with three or more processes sticking out from the soma, including one axon and a bunch of dendrites. Bipolar neurons have two processes, an axon and a single dendrite, extending from opposite sides of the cell body. They're pretty rare, found only in a few special sensory places like the retina of your eye. Unipolar neurons, on the other hand, have just one process and are found mostly in your sensory receptors. So if you ever find yourself probing around someone's nervous tissue, remember these three terms to help you figure out what you're looking at. But because we're talking about physiology here as well as anatomy, we have to classify these cells in 
in terms of their function. And that basically comes down to which way an impulse travels through a neuron in relation to the brain and spine. Our sensory, or afferent neurons, pick up messages and transmit impulses from sensory receptors in, say, the skin or internal organs, and send them toward the central nervous system. Most sensory neurons are unipolar. Motor, or efferent neurons, do the opposite. They're mostly multipolar and transmit impulses away from the central nervous system and out to your body's muscles and glands. And then there are interneurons, or association neurons, which live in the central nervous system and transmit impulses between those sensory and motor neurons. Interneurons are the most abundant of your body's neurons and are mostly multipolar. Okay, it's applied knowledge time. Let's review everything we've learned so far in terms of that spider on your knee. Those eight creeping legs first activate your unipolar sensory neurons in the skin on your knee when they sense something crawling on you. The signal travels up an axon wrapped in Schwann cells and into your spinal cord where it gets passed on to several multipolar interneurons. Now, some of those interneurons might send a signal straight down a bunch <coughs> of multipolar neurons to your quadriceps muscle on your thigh, triggering you to kick your leg out before you even know what's going on. Other interneurons will pass that signal to neurons that carry it up to your spinal cord through your brain. That's where your body first recognizes that thing as a spider, and the connections between neurons interpret and split the signal so that you can either scream and start swinging your arms wildly about, or remain calm and with dignity, remove the spider from your person. It's all based on the connections between neurons, which brings me to a whole new question. How? How in the name of Jean-Martin Charcot do nerve cells use chemistry and electricity to communicate with each other? It's one of the most stupefyingly awesome and complicated aspects of your nervous system and basically of all life, and it is what we will cover in our next lesson. Today, you learned how sensory input integration and motor output of your nervous system basically rules your world. We talked about how the central and peripheral systems are organized and what they do, and looked at the role of different glial cells and nervous tissue function. We also looked at the role, anatomy, and function of neuron types in the body, both structurally and functionally, and how everything plays out when you find a spider crawling on your skin. Thank you for watching, especially Okay, so again, um, please forgive how fast he talks. We will be covering this. It's going to be in um, two chapters, like I said. So um, you can always rewatch that, that video on your own. But what I wanted to do was um, talk about what was in that video. So in your, um, again, your, this is nervous system assignment, but it is a Zoom group, meaning there's no point for this. I had uploaded for you guys some discussion questions so we can talk about what was covered in that video. Um, and again, it's not for points, it's just that I like to have you guys interacting with one another. So I'm opening up the discussion uh, Zoom group questions here for you, and you can open them up on your own. Um, here it is. So what I want you guys to do now that you've watched that video, uh, all I'm going to have you do, can you please read us this uh, about Scarlett? Can you read us that? In Zoom breakout groups, watch the nervous system video and discuss the basic functions of the system, its parts, and the basic structure of neurons. Be prepared to share out your answers to the class. And since we went ahead and watched this as, as a group, we don't have to do the breakout groups anymore because we're, we're kind of doing it as, as a class, right? So can you please tell us then, um, anyone, what, what are the basic functions of the nervous system? We'll just do this together since it's, since it's just us and we did it as a group. What were the basic functions of the nervous system, guys? Um, voluntary control of movement. Mm -hmm. So movement, voluntary control. Anything and else? control of the body's internal. Um, okay. Like okay. environment, I guess. Okay, okay. And what were some of the parts that were discussed in the video? Like what are the different uh, parts of the nervous system? Remember he had that little like chart does anyone remember the parts of the divisions of the nervous system? The central nervous system and uh -huh. the peripheral. Good. And in the peripheral, remember, there were like these other subdivisions. Does anyone remember the different divisions of the peripheral? So the central one, that's the easy one. But the peripheral has a lot of subdivisions. Does anyone remember the subdivisions of the peripheral?
Anyone, what were some the of the autonomic clips? system? Good, good, the autonomic and somatic. Very good, very good. So the autonomic and the somatic, uh, do you remember which is which? Like what does on autonomic do versus somatic? Mm. Your automatic keeps your heart beating and your lungs free. Yeah, and actually that's a that's a good way to think about it. Anna, I know you said automatic, it's actually pronounced autonomic, but oh. like no, but it's okay. It's okay because automatic kind of means like on its own, right? And that's exactly what the autonomic does. It kind of does these things without your control, right? So like you said, it keeps the heart pumping. It keeps your lungs uh inhaling and exhaling. It keeps your food digesting. So the autonomic is the one essentially that is not under your control. So then what's the somatic? Voluntary and conscious control. control. Yeah, those are the ones that are under your own conscious control. Those are the ones that you can, <laughs> my cat's in the way. Those are the ones that you can actually con control on your own. Um, there are more subdivisions, like, like he said, within that, which we'll get to, which are the sympathetic and parasympathetic. So under the autonomic, like Anna said, the one that you can't control you then have another subdivision, okay? And that we'll look at in the book called the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Essentially think of it like the fight or flight response that we covered in the endocrine system because the endocrine and the nervous actually work together. So we'll explore those parts a little further um, in the book. And then he got really, really in depth with uh, neurons, okay? And, and I should have said neuron versus, uh, versus glia cells. Um, because they are different. But those are essentially the two different types of nerve structures found in the nervous system. Uh, the glia, he didn't say much about other than just like listing those six different ones. And um, they're important. Of course, they're very important. They're like the support system of the neuron. But the neuron is, is kind of the one that the book goes way more in detail into because uh, neurons are essentially like, you know, the typical nerve cell in our body. So does anyone remember the basic structure of the neuron that he discussed? The basic structure of the neuron? Is it like the axon or mm -hmm. something? Exactly, the axon. The axon was one part. And do you remember what the axon does or what it looks like? How about how about this, guys? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share. It. Here. I'm I'm listening. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw. It triggers the sensory neuron, and it passes a message. Okay, so here I'm gonna draw something. Let's see if I can draw this. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna have you guys help me label. Okay. Um, So on this drawing, okay, so this is, this is a nerve cell, not too bad. Um, where would the axon be? Where's the axon? In the middle. Here? No, this in the, the stream. The this? long stream. This? In the middle. This part. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yes. Very good. Uh, it's not that green thing. It's not that green thing right here. Uh, this is the axon. So the axon uh, is what does the communication. It's what sends the message, right? So messages are received here to these little stringy tree parts. Does anyone remember what these little stringy tree parts are called? Dendrites. Very good. These are called the dendrites. So the dendrites are what receive the information from another nerve cell because your nerves are essentially just like a communication system within your body. So a signal gets sent, right? It's pain, it's heat, it's whatever, right? That message gets sent through the dendrite, which are again these little tree like structures. In fact, dender is Latin for tree. So these are actually called little trees. 
so that message is received to the dendrite and then it passes through this large central part does anyone remember what this part of the nerve is called the membrane not the membrane the nucleus very good so so the nucleus would be the central part but the actual oh. like body is called the soma Okay, the soma or the cell body. And you're right, within that cell body, there is the nucleus right here. But we just refer to the, the middle part as the soma. Okay, so we have our dendrite, we have our soma, we have our axon, and then you have these long parts at the end. And so if the message gets sent this way, and actually let me color this a different color, right? So if a message comes this way, it then travels from dendrite through the soma, through the axon, and then out to this part, which we call the terminus. And think of it like in Spanish, terminar means end. So these are the ends of the cell. And within that terminus, you have essentially, let me, let me draw something else here. Um, let me get back to my original color. So a terminus actually then connects to an adjacent or neighboring cell. So that message then that's being passed on from dendrite to soma through axon to terminus then jumps across onto the next dendrite. Does that make sense? So that's how one cell communicates with another cell. So it'll go from here and it'll jump to this dendrite. The space right here where, where, where cells jump across we call this the synapse. And he didn't talk too much about that. Um, I'll talk more about it in my notes, okay? But that synaptic gap essentially is the communication network between nerve cell to nerve cell. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Yes. Guys? Okay, okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing this screen with you. And okay, good. So now that we've talked about that, um, um, Zoom video. Let me now connect this to. Um, let me go back here. Can, okay, so that was the video. Again, you can watch it on your own, guys, as always. And here are the discussion questions that we just did. Again, it's just review. Um, so, from here, now that we've had a brief intro, the watching assignment is the follow ups to what he was talking about, which is now more in depth on the central and the peripheral by themselves. Okay, so that's what that watching assignment is. It's 20 questions about two different videos. So if you click on this watching assignment, I provided you the links. Um, so if you click on the sheet here, I give you two different links, one for the central, one for the nervous. Um, and then I then have, uh, like I said, the reading uh, article assignment on the central nervous. So there's one on the ELA, which is English, and then there's one on science, but they both cover the central. The peripheral nervous system, we're gonna do something different on, and, and especially because that's the more complicated system, we'll do something a little different, okay? It, it won't be a reading assignment, okay? I haven't thought about what that'll be, um, but I'm thinking it'll probably be like a discussion assignment, or maybe you guys demonstrate something in the peripheral nervous system, okay? So that'll be different. But for now, these are the three assignments. Um, again, due dates are here. Work on them at your own pace. Don't worry about you know early or late. Just just do them when you can. Okay, but do them before we do the summit. So let's go back into the module. So those are the three assignments. Um, let's go into my notes now. Okay, so I've kind of put this into perspective. So in the notes. And let me go full. Let me go full screen with my notes here. Hold on. I like full screen. So in my notes, where we left off last time, I was just introducing to you the the differences between the system itself. So now what I want to do is kind of connect it to what he was talking about in the video. <clears throat> Hold on, my computer's a little slow today. All right. So where we left off, for those of you who weren't here on Monday, I had told everyone that this module is going to cover two chapters, eight and nine. 
and they cover the structure and the function separately, but I'm gonna combine it into one set of nuts, okay? So this is where we left off on, on Monday, right? We said there's two different systems and technically the, the peripheral nervous system like we just saw in the video has even more subdivisions within it. But essentially you can think of it like this, right? The brain and the spinal cord make up the central or we just call it the CNS and the peripheral is every other nerve in the body which we just abbreviate as the PNS, okay? And again, here's just summarizing what we talked about and you just saw in the video. And here is a you know pretty easy breakdown of the CNS versus PNS, okay? So again, central nervous system, that's your brain and your spinal cord. Peripheral is essentially every other nerve throughout the body. Now, remember that breakdown that we said of the peripheral nervous system? Well, here it is. I'll let you take a look at that. And so like we just heard in the video, the nervous system is broken up into two major systems, right? Your central, as you can see, it's just the brain and the spinal cord. Not to say that the brain isn't that important or complicated, we'll get into that. But as far as subdivisions go, central nervous system is just these two things. The peripheral is much more complicated as you can see. So the peripheral, like we saw, has its motor and sensory neurons, like you saw in the video, um, afferent versus efferent, right? So the sensory neurons, like we saw in the video, are, are the ones that receive like a stimulus or, or some information from the outside world. And in the case of that video, or in the case of my example for Monday, like a spider in the hand or a, a hot hand burning your hand or something poking you, that sensory neuron sends a message to the peripheral nervous system and then motor neurons then act upon it. But within the motor neurons, as we just saw, there are two subdivisions. Like Anna told us, the autonomic, which is the unconscious control, meaning you cannot control these things. And what were some examples, Anna, of autonomic nervous system functions? What were some autonomic functions in your body? The heart beating and your lungs breathing. Exactly, exactly, right? Heart, lungs, even digestion, right? You do not control that. So those are the motor neurons that are autonomic. But then you also have the somatic ones. What would be an example, uh, please, Daisy, of some somatic functions? What would be an example of some somatic nervous system functions, Daisy? Like deciding to move your arm exactly exactly so it's conscious control right it's something you can do something about but within the autonomic nervous system there is another mini system that we're going to talk about we we briefly looked at it like i said in the endocrine system we call it the fight or flight response um when did we talk about the fight or flight response does anyone remember which which gland control of that fight or flight response and which hormone? Does anyone remember? It was in the endocrine system. Which gland or hormones were associated with the fight or flight response, guys? Come on, we just talked about this. Which gland or hormone are responsible for the fight or flight response? The cortisol? Uh, cortisol is one of the hormones released. Uh, do you remember what gland that's in, Anna? Um, starts with an A. <laughs> starts with an A. Adrenal glands. There you go, the adrenal glands. Very good, very good. Yeah. So the adrenal glands release cortisol. Cortisol is not that hormone, Anna, but it is associated. Um, is it the one like, with the... E? It's the know. one with the E, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, epine it's epinephrine, but remember it has a synonym. So for those of you uh, that, that, that took the quiz, I responded to your answers because some of you wrote uh, adrenaline as the answer for the quiz. And adrenaline is like a synonym for epinephrine. So I gave you full credit for it because I, I've been calling it both simultaneously in the notes. But yes, it's, it's epinephrine. It's the one that starts with the E. That's the, that's the, the hormone 
that's responsible for fight or flight. But remember, your nervous system controls everything. So even though that is the hormone, which other gland controls the adrenal gland? Which gland controls the adrenal gland? What's the master gland? That was also another quiz question. Pituitary gland? The pituitary, right? So although this is a um, endocrine system hormone responsible for fight or flight, technically it's controlled by the pituitary, which is part of the nervous system, okay? So that's what we call the sympathetic nervous system. It's the fight or flight response. So like if you're an athlete or if you're going down a roller coaster or if you're you know, stuck in a burning fire and you need to get out, that, that adrenaline rush that we call epinephrine is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. The opposite reaction is what we call the parasympathetic, right? Because you don't always want to be like high levels of cortisol, high levels of epinephrine. Why do you think? Why would we not always want to be in fight or flight response mode? Why would we not want that, guys? Think about what you remember of the adrenal glands. Why would we not want to always be in fight or flight mode? Doesn't your heart beat faster? Yeah, exactly. It makes your heart beat really fast and makes you digest really, really fast. Um, and for those of you that were doing your health project on cortisol, um, I think, I think Damari, I think you had mentioned cortisol in your project. I know one of you did. Um, cortisol, high levels of cortisol is a very, very bad thing. It can cause heart attacks. So we don't always want to be fight or flight mode. So we have an opposite reaction called the parasympathetic, which essentially puts us back into rest mode. Okay. So that's the entire nervous system, like just broken down as a simple graphic organizer. Please, please, please look at this slide. Okay. This is summarizing everything we're going to talk about. We're going to revisit it. Okay. So that's the nervous system. Any questions about this? No. Okay. Can someone give me an example of how the... So in the video, he mentioned the response of um, a spider on his leg and him reacting to it. Can someone explain to me how that works again using this chart? Spiders on your leg. How does the nervous system react using this chart? The sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system like sense the spider. Mm -hmm. And so they send that to the central nervous system. So like the brain, which moves the motor neurons. Mm -hmm. Good. And then And then for motor, where does it go, Daisy? Autonomic nervous system. Uh, well, think about that. Think about that. If it's autonomic and I'm paralyzed, would I be able to get that spider off of me? No. Okay, so no. Somatic. It's somatic, yeah. It would be somatic yeah. because, because I'm consciously going to flick that spider off, right? So, yeah. so we'll talk about paralysis and nerve damage later. Um, um, and I'm glad that, that you kind of got stuck there because it, it is very complicated as you just demonstrated. So that's the nervous system. Thank you, Daisy, in a, in a, in a little kind of easy to understand chart. Um, but we'll review it throughout, okay? Um, from there, let me just tell you how the nervous system develops, right? Um, going back to first semester, we talked about these three layers, the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. Well, your, your nervous system essentially forms from the ectoderm, which is your outermost layer right so here in this picture this is again a, a very very early early stage of you so you uh, during your um, development your embryonic development you're you're not a person right you're just layers of cells and those three layers that we call the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm from the outermost layer that we call the ectoderm you can see here that that outer layer starts to fold inwards okay and then in on itself. And in this little, what we call neural tube, this neural tube, this is where your nervous system starts to develop from. 
this process of your ectoderm folding in on itself to form the nervous system eventually, we call that neurulation. Okay, so make sure you look at that, that illustration there. Um, and here's just to review the, the three basic functions of the nervous system as he summarized in the video, but I thought I'd go a little more in depth, okay, right, because he talks super fast. So there's essentially three different things that your nervous system does. Can you read us the first one, please? How about Damari? What's the first thing the nervous system does that I highlighted? Sensation, receiving information about environment as a stimulus, big five senses, taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing. Yeah, and that's the easiest way for you to think about that, guys, is as your senses, right? Taste, touch, hear. But Obviously, those are not the only senses that exist in our body. We just call those the big five or the traditional five because they're the easiest for people to understand. But there's more than five. There's up to 20, actually. So like Daisy told us in the example, spiders on your leg, you sense it. And that, that stimulus, as Damari said, is the thing that you act upon. Okay, so uh, think of the word stimulate, right? Stimulate means to want you to do something. So you receive that info, like Damari said. And then what's the response? Can you read us this, please? How about Anna? What's the response? Anna, can you read Response. This? Response, motor or movement due to stimulus, voluntary, oh, voluntary somatic nervous system versus involuntary autonomic nervous system. Very good. And like we saw in that chart and Daisy illustrated for us, right, there are two types of movements that occur. So the motor neuron can either allow you to consciously move or it moves on its own, right? And that's, that's part of the response, okay? So we'll talk, can anyone think of an of a, a, of a autonomic response um, that you're very familiar with? What would be an example, besides the ones that you mentioned of the heartbeat and the, and the lungs? You guys know what reflexes are, right? You guys have heard of reflexes, yeah. right? Okay, so we're going to talk about reflexes because reflexes, or what we call the reflex arc, are an example of an involuntary response. And mm -hmm. if we were in class, you know, we'd be doing um, nervous system little tests because, you know, you probably have done that old school one where they like tap your knee and then your, your knee kicks up. That's an example of a reflex, okay? Um, and can you read us the last one, please, Fatima? Integration? Integration stimuli received by sensory organs and communicated to the nervous system. Yeah, and so the integration is kind of the in-between. So it receives the info, it integrates it, and then it responds, right? So actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to move this. It, sh it should kind of be like this. Then. Let me put it like this. Mr. Yeah. So in other words, a reflex is like a reaction? It is. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. What did I do in my notes here? <laughs> it is. Uh, so um, it, it is a reaction, um, but it's not as simple as, as, as just that because you gotta look at this chart. So a reflex, Damari, is an example of an autonomic nervous system movement. So let's say, for example, you're sitting at the doctor's office and they have that little hammer, they hit, they hit that knee you know, in, 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 your, in your patella, which you have a really long nerve that travels through your leg. They hit that knee and you don't have control over that reflex, which is just that response, like you said. And so then um, that signal gets sent up to the motor neurons, peripheral nervous system, and the brain tells your knee to kick without your control. So that's exactly what a reflex is. Does that make sense, Damari? Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. So, um, okay, and then I'm gonna end here because um, glia versus neurons was obviously the craziest part of his video. Um, they are very complicated. And like you just saw in that video, there are six different types of glia. We also refer to them as neuroglia. Um, and then there's neurons. So neurons are kind of like the more important of the two. It's not to say glia are not important, um, but neurons are kind of the ones that you know are responsible for like the whole functioning of your nervous system. So we'll, we'll pause here. Can you just read us, please, Myrtle? What's the difference between a glia and a neuron? 
provide framework of tissue that supports neurons and their activities. Very good. And then a neuron? Functionally more important because of how it communicates in the nervous system. Yeah, and let me just show you this picture here. So this is a picture of glia and neurons. So on this picture, let me, let me draw on this. On this picture, um, the neuron is essentially, you know, this thing, right? It has, it has the, the soma, it has the axons like Anatolis, it has the dendrites, it has the, this is the neuron right here, okay? The, the glia are these things. Right, and he saw that he said them in the video the oligodendrocytes, the astrocytes, the microglia. Okay, so it's not to say the glia are not important, I mean, there's a lot of them, and actually, like he saw, like he told you, there is 10 to 1, there's that many more glia than there are neurons. So, glias, as you can see, are just the small little connections, right? So, there's one neuron here, but there's another neuron right here. Look, there's another neuron right there that runs right here. And as you can see, the glia, which is right here, the glia are the little connections in between these two neurons, right? You can see it right here. It's in between them. Does that, does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense, guys? Okay, yeah. okay. all right, cool. So um, glia versus neurons, we'll talk a lot more about them. For now, I'll just list you the ones that he mentioned in the video. He mentioned six, there's actually a little bit more than that. But I think uh, for the purposes of simplicity, I'll only stick to the, the ones he mentioned. So I may delete a few from here. Um, and then the neurons themselves, okay? And like we did in that drawing, for those of you who aren't watching live with me, please review that video because we drew a neuron. And so in a neuron, uh, like we drew, we have the cell body itself, which we call the soma. We have the dendrites, which are these little trees. We have the terminus, which is the end of this thing. And that's where the synapse is found, which is that little gap. And then we have this lengthy thing that I think Anna uh, labeled for us called the axon, okay? So I'll go ahead and pause there because I, I know this is a lot. But in the meanwhile, like I said, you can go ahead and um, continue uh, reviewing my notes on your own, and you can go ahead and get a head start on the other assignments for for this um, for this module. Please remember that the the assignments that I label called Zoom groups are not worth any points. Some people have been asking me how do you upload the discussion stuff that we do in the breakouts. You don't have to. Those are just like a supplement to, um, to, uh, to you know, add on to what we're talking about in class. So, so for those of you that are watching this video, uh, those discussions that we just did, those questions, you don't have to send me that. That's just uh, so we can talk about it. What I do need you to send me, I'll go back into the module, is the, in the nervous system module, it's the assignments, right? So everything after uh, notes, these are the things you're submitting to me. Okay. Um, any other questions, guys? So what did we talk about today, guys? Damari, what did we talk about today? Uh, today we talked about... Um, just one thing? Anything, yeah. Just give me a brief summary for those of people that are watching the video so they can get a summary. What did we talk about? Or anyone, what did we talk about today, guys? The process of the nervous system, mm -hmm. like what it has to go through. What it has to go through, okay. Such as what? Um, does the nervous system and then it goes to goes to what Anna what were you saying
anyone else, please, because I gotta end this class now. What did we talk about today? Um, the flight or flight. Say it again, Daisy. We talked about the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and how the peripheral nervous system interacts with the central nervous system. And we learned about the three different touching, like the different neurons and like the motor, the sensory, and how it reacts to the sensation and how it moves. Good, good. In a nutshell, that's basically it. So, so thank you very much, Daisy, Anna, Damari. And everyone else, please don't forget uh, the notes have been uploaded. Uh, I'm not done with both chapters, so I will update them, but you can reread what we looked at today. And as always, um, please rewatch this YouTube video, and I'll see you guys on Friday. Okay? Bye, guys. All right, so now we got biology. Uh oh, where did Cynthia go? I think Cynthia left. All right, so we'll wait for everyone. Vivian, you're the first one here. Oh, there, there they come. Okay, here comes Vanessa. There's Oscar. Oh, hey, Oscar. Oscar, so you, you got my emails, right? You know, you know what to do? Oscar? Hey. You got my email, right? Uh, Here, I'm I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you a private chat right now, okay? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh everyone else, while we wait for the rest of the class to get here, you can go ahead and uh Open up Schoology. Like we said on Monday, we're going to continue where we left off. We're going to have a brief conversation about that video, and then we're going to have a couple people talk about their projects. Uh, so, Oscar, I'm going to message you right now, okay? Okay. Morning, guys. Morning. All right, so we got Jaime, Vivian, Cynthia, Oscar, Vanessa. <clears throat> oh, you know what, guys? Um, I'm I'm gonna ask you guys for a huge, huge favor. Okay. Um, usually, what I do is I record every class session and I upload it on YouTube. But I just forgot. I didn't. I didn't finish recording for my previous class. I'm gonna end this group really quick, and then can you guys please come back in? Yeah. Because I have to end it for it to stop recording. I'm so sorry. So Cynthia, Vanessa, Oscar, Vivian, Jaime, can you guys come right back in, please? I'm going to end it and then come back in like 10 seconds later, okay? All right. All right. All right. Sorry about that, yeah. guys.